Hello, my name is Anthony Scarduzio. I'm a junior at Penn State University, majoring in landscape contracting, and this is my overview on our Dynascape master plan. This project, unlike the one done on AutoCAD, which is pretty much an exact replica, this had to be done on a Windows server. Since I own a Mac, obviously I don't have access to that, so Penn State offers a Web Labs link through Canvas, which then granted me access into a Windows Lab computer remotely so I can do the project from there. From there, once we started the project on Dynascape, we inserted our image, then resized the image to fit our 11 by 17 picture, and then converted our scale to one to one so our drawings would match real world dimensions and the set scale. After that, the drawing consists of using figures here to insert plants and shrubs so their set positionings on the drawing. Then the copy and paste tool was moved very usefully and was very efficient in this process. After inserting our image, we had to make sure it matched the title block on the inserted picture, which then was a process into using a rectangle tool and measuring it out to a correct measure in order so the picture would be matching up with the title block. This then led to us using the model space, which pretty much set the picture to an 11 by 17. In order to do that, you had to go into File, New Drawing, and then from there you would scroll and find your set scale that you would want to use. We used an 11 by 17, and 1 inch equals 10 feet. From then on, we used our drawing tools in order to actually draw the picture on Dynascape, which include using the Polyline tool, which I'll be getting into on the next slide. Here you can see the drawing I inserted is pretty much all the polyline tools we used. When opening Dynascapes, you're given the option to use a quick start tool box, which would pretty much it's like a quick access. So once you use the polyline tool, you have the option to make it closed or open. Closing it just basically means that once you start drawing the polyline tool, it already has an endpoint set. But keeping it open allows you to pretty much connect where you want to put it and then eventually bring it back to where you started in order to finish it. As you can see, we used the polyline tool to draw the property lines, the driveway, the house, the walkway, and planting beds. After all that was inserted, we used the offset tool to pretty much draw the border of the house and then we used the line tool to draw the windows and doors. The offset tool is very useful in that in which you would set the refer reference point as to how many feet or inches you want the border to be. After that, we went on to insert our figures for the shrubs and trees and the areas menu, which I have also there. And also, if you accidentally put a line in on a layer you don't want it to be, you can revise the layer there. In the layer tab, you have the option to, of course, change the color, change the name of the layer, and also choose if you want it to be visible in the drawing that you're looking at currently which is very useful when you want to draw on the polylines and you don't want them overlapping or intersecting with any of the trees or shrubs that you include in the drawing. After using the polyline tool, we used our hatch tool, which is also in the quick start menu. You can see the little brick layer with a blue circle on it. From there, if you hover over, your, over that icon, it'll bring you down to one that doesn't have the blue circle on it. And from there, you can insert your hatch. Hatches were a little tricky because we had to use closed polylines in order to draw the boundary as to where we want the, the hatch to be inserted. If we didn't do that, then the hatch wouldn't really have any boundaries and it would just take over the entire closed polyline. But at the end of the day, I really like how many options they have for the hatch. And it was inserted pretty easily and no problems. I really like the figures tool in Dynascape because it pretty much has so many options and they're preset layers. Once you go into the figures tier on the left side under Dynascapes, you can press the little arrow with a line under it and you're given a bunch of options to choose from. You can use your accessories, shrubs, trees, even if you wanted to insert a water feature. They're all preset layers and they have preset colors. So you don't need to be in a certain layer in order to insert any of your figures because they'll already be in their preset layer, of course. And when we used Dynascape, you had to 
download a whole different template, copy and paste, and it was just a whole process, but it was a lot easier in Dynascapes, and I thought it was pretty cool how they had so many options you can choose from. Once you insert the figure that you want to use, there is a three-step clicking process. So once you want to, once you find out where you want to put your figure, first click involves rotating the image to whichever angle you would like it to be at. The second click, which is probably the most important, would be sizing the image. And the third left click would involve shrinking the image vertically, which isn't very useful, but it can be used in different ways. And after that, you want to right click and your image will be set. So pretty much when we were inserting our figures, it would be two left clicks and one right click because we weren't using the third click. Once we had all our lines and shrubs and trees in, we then went on to use the plant labeling tool. Plant labeling tool is located in the Dynascapes tier on the left side. You can see it has a little flower and then what looks like almost like a brick layer and then the text line which involves actually labeling the plants. Here in these three pictures you can see the bottom left picture would be how you would want to label your plants. Once you go in to label the plant which is the tool that has a little line in the text box, you're going to go to this picture that's on the right side and you're going to want to type in whatever you want to type as to how many plants or what you really want to say like five Japanese maples or three deciduous trees then once you go in to insert the figure it's another three-step clicking process Dynascape uses this and it's pretty useful at some times but it can be a nuisance but once you're ready to put in your figure line the first click sets where your arrow is going to be pointing. The second one is a nice offset layer, an offset line, excuse me, that would then just give you a little space and be able to angle where you want to put your texting. From here, we used um, the constraint tool, which is located at the top there in the picture you can see. We used ortho mode, which gives you 45, 90 degree angles which is very useful instead of just free ranging where you want to put the text. After that, it was all using auto count and manual. So using the auto count, which I find pretty cool actually, you go into and you select the figures that you want to be auto counted. Like in my example, I picked a couple shrubs and it actually combines them into one large shrub instead of just the overlaying shrubs. And once you go in to insert the layer for the figures and the plant labeling, you're able to choose whether you want it to be labeled as manual or auto count. And once you go into auto count and you just click the figure, it'll show uh, five of these or four of these. Now, when you're doing manual, you need to set the correct number of plants that you'll be labeling in, in the plant label. If you happen to make any mistake in labeling any plants or anything of that such, you can easily go into the labeling line and right click it. From there, you're able to change the text and pretty much do whatever you want from there. As you can see on the final plan, there is a plant list, which was pretty easy to insert. In doing so, it pretty much groups all the plants that you put in and labeling and the count. And it's very useful and pretty neat as to you can see everything that's in there as a list. So that's the overview of our Dynascape project we use for our master plan. In my conclusion, I have some pros and cons listed here. Some pros, I really like the labeling tool. It was very useful and Pretty cool how you can use auto count and combine figures for the shrubs and trees and really give an idea as to where you want something and how you would like it to be there. I also liked how Dynascape had their own list of plants which gave you many options as to the specificities of the plant or tree. Inserting figures was a lot easier too. Just because of the preset layers 
Although the, the three click process might be a nuisance, but in the end, it's really not that big of a deal. The quick start feature was pretty cool as well because in AutoCAD, you always had to go back to the line, the line tool, and click from where you wanted to go from there. But in the quick start feature, you could pretty much do whatever. And as for the cons, I didn't really like how it was constricted to a Windows server because then I had to go into the web labs and that was always a, just a little bit of a process. But being able to download AutoCAD on my Mac was very useful. Um, I didn't really like how some of the modeling was used. And from there, like the three quick the three click process was definitely kind of unnecessary if I think is the right word. Once I inserted something in AutoCAD, I can just grip edit it or do it really I wanted to it if I wanted to change the size or anything of that sort. But overall I really enjoyed using Dynascapes and it was honestly a lot easier and quicker to use than AutoCAD and I definitely recommend it. Thank you for watching my presentation on our master plan and I hope I covered everything.